in the SU-25 Enigma Cold War server with 47 players on the demanding Syria map and here I experienced very stable gameplay without any micro stutters and achieved a maximum FPS of 72. Fantastic and this performance was consistent both on the ground and in the air and all the indicators were very readable. My name is Labox and in this updated video I will guide you step by step once again on how to get the best VR performance in demanding multiplayer servers such as Contention, the Enigma Cold War server and Blue Flag with the Quest 3. First I want to share my computer specs so you can adjust your settings accordingly. I run a somewhat old i9-9900K CPU with a 38Ti graphics card and 64GB of RAM. For playing DCS I advise you to upgrade to 64GB of RAM as it is the most well, cost effective enhancement you can make to your computer. Now, alright, in step 1 we connect the Quest 3 to the computer using the link cable. Next we open the MetaQuest link app on your computer and you click on settings then general and we ensure here that the MetaQuest link is set as the active OpenXR runtime. We stay in the MetaQuest link app and click on devices. Click on the Quest 3 image and then in the sidebar on the right side you click on graphics preferences. And we here set the refresh rate to 72Hz and the render resolution to 1.0 or uh, 4128 by 2208 Now why 72Hz? Well, I will come back to that later. Now we are done with the MetaQuest link app, up next we need to download the OpenXR Toolkit. The link is in the description below and once installed open the OpenXR Toolkit app and well you should see something like this. There is nothing that we need to change here. Now sometimes having the OpenXR Toolkit running can cause black screens in the headset when playing games. And there is no general way to detect errors with the OpenXR API layers so you could use the OpenXR API layers tool to detect and fix those errors. Uh, this tool is handy if you use multiple headsets, use multiple runtimes, uh, and the yellow exclamation mark indicates there is an error. And you can fix them by just clicking on fix it. Well, this isn't necessary for everyone, but it might be helpful to take a look at if you have some weird problems here and there. Now here comes a very important step to gain FPS, as always mentioned in my previous guides, you need to download the Oculus Tray tool. Once again, the link is in the description and once you open the tool, ensure that the default ASW mode is off and adaptive GPU scaling is off and set the FOV multiplier to 0.65 left and 0.65 right and then click save. This is cr a crucial step and prevents the rendering of images outside of your view. Now put on your headset and connect it uh, uh, to your computer with the Quest link. Now because we set the FOV multiplier to 0.65 you might see some black bars on the side or on the top. If this is too much for you, you can adjust it to for example 0.7 or whatever suits you best. Though you will likely get used to it, trust me. I see very little black, uh, black bars with these settings and I just pretend it's the pilot helmet. Okay, now we are connected, let's start DCS and of course we start DCS uh, with the multi-threading version. So go to your DCS folder, click on bin MT and then the DCS.exe. Once you are in DCS, open the OpenXR Toolkit by pressing left control plus F2. So left control F2. 
you will see the following screen and the only thing I want you to do here is to turn the turbo mode on. Now let's take a look at my in-game settings. So these are my in-game settings. Resolution 1920 by 1080. Now if you are not recording or streaming you can put this lower and gain a bit of a performance boost. I have one monitor. Resolution of cockpit displays 512 but surely you can experiment with higher. Anti-aliasing, DLAA, although it gives a bit of a smear on the screen, like it's a bit of a blurriness when planes fly by, so you could experiment with MSAA here. Upscaling, I like it off, I don't like DLSS in VR. Sharpening, uh, I set mine to 0.5, that's nice. Textures, at high, but if you can't keep up with the FPS, then try medium and terrain textures on high because I think, yeah, putting it to low is kind of ugly. Now, shadows, I put mine to medium, but you can experiment with low or flat only as this will give you quite the performance boost. Flat shadows, blur, I don't know why I have that on on, but I leave it there. Uh, secondary shadows, off. Triple S, off. Visible range to medium. Now, this doesn't affect how far you can see planes that that's for everyone it's the same this is just uh, ground objects and scenery uh, civilian traffic now to be honest you can put this to off but okay it's on low for me clouds on standard water is medium for me SSAO off SSLR off lens effects put that to none please heat blur off motion blur off it's not in VR it's black depth of field off we don't need that. Here you can see the other uh, stuff I have. Clutter, gl grass, forest visibility, forest details factor. You can play a little bit depending on your hardware, of course. Um, then we have anisotropic filtering. I put mine on 16 times. Train objects, shadows, flat. Cockpit global illumination, off. And here I have rain droplets off as well, because oh man, I don't really care that much, to be honest. I mean, it looks fantastic. You can turn them on if you if you like it. Uh, and then just uh, click save on custom free, for example, so you can experiment with uh, different uh, templates here. Now, one more thing, we go to the VR tab, and here I set my pixel density to 1.2. But I think I can set it as well to 1.3 and keep that 72 FPS and have it, you know, pretty sharp and clear. I can I can read the indicators, but 1.2 is, you know, for the indicators, it, it works very well. Now, you can enjoy flying in a multiplayer server with great FPS, but, you know, why not 90 FPS, 90 Hz? I find that maintaining a stable maximum FPS of 72 in the 72 Hz mode is much more stable than fluctuating between 75 and 90 FPS, like going from 80 to 72, 85 to 80, which often causes micro stutters, a bit of artifacts, ghosting, etc. Now, if you are playing with glasses, consider switching to an alternative method which is using the VR Wave prescription lenses, the sponsor of this video. And uh, I love it. Uh, I normally always played with glasses and I at the same time was always afraid to damage them. It was also not very comfortable. But uh, with these lenses, it also stops eye strain as it has a blue protect lens and they are super easy to, uh, to, to put them on the headset. And they have them not only for the Quest 3, the PSVR 2, Index, Apple Vision Pro, you can get them at vrwave.store. Also, the headband or strap that comes with the Quest 3 is extremely uncomfortable. So I would highly, highly suggest getting a more comfortable head strap from Kiwi Design, which I have myself and makes wearing the Quest 3 extremely comfortable. The head strap also comes with an extra battery, extending your playtime by two to four hours. And this head strap is also extremely affordable compared to the head strap that made ourselves for a ridiculous price. So Kiwi Design it is, the link is in the description. Okay, enjoy everyone, and on a final note, finding these settings 
takes me hours, if not days, and uh, I don't know how, ma how many game resets. Now you can just support me by simply liking the channel here. Uh, and of course, what I find most important is share your experience, share your performance experiences with us here in the comments down below. We need to learn from each other what works and what doesn't. And yes, I often receive a lot of questions, but you can also join our Discord to discuss DCS VR optimizations. Now, I hope this helps give you a, perform a nice performance, sorry. And uh, well, yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the latest things happening in VR. And I hope to see you as always in the next video. Ciao, ciao.